Hello everyone, I'm Mr Morris and for our lesson today we're going to be looking at Unit 1 which is the music industry and as I'm sure you already know there is an exam for this part of the BTEC course, okay? So in preparation for this we're going to be looking at some example questions. Okay then, so you are going to need a pen and paper for this part of the lesson so if you don't have those you can pause the video now and go and get them. Okay, so this paper is an hour long and there are going to be a total of 50 marks up for grabs. Okay, so it's separated into three sections. There's an A, B and C section. The A section is worth 16 marks, B section is worth 17 and the C section is also worth 17 marks. To begin, we're going to look at section A's one mark questions and typically these are tick box multiple choice questions. So we're going to work through a few examples of these now. So what I'd like you to do after each of these questions have been asked is pause the video and answer the question yourself and then when you put the video back on I'll give you the answer so you can check if you're right or not. So the first question is to which organisation would a live performance venue typically pay annual fees? And the answer to that one is PRS for Music. And if you don't know, PRS stands for Performing Rights Society. And basically, what the Performing Rights Society do is pay their artists royalties, which just means money, for their music being broadcast on TV or radio, or being played in a public place. This could just be a live performance, or it could be a recording of their song. And in relation to this question the live performance venues would be paying these royalties to the PRS, which in turn will pay them to their members. But if you got any of the wrong answers on that list, the reason they are wrong is because they're all unions and their purpose is to give you legal advice and fight for fair terms and conditions. So they're not there to collect royalties on your behalf. That is the PRS's job. And just in case you didn't know what these other unions are, the BECTU stands for Broadcast Entertainment Cinematography Theatres Union, and this is for people in the film industry. Equity is for actors, dancers and stage managers. And then MU stands for Musicians Union, and this is for musicians for legal advice and things like that. Okay, so we'll now move on to the next question. And this is another tick box question, and it's also worth one mark. The question is, which of the following is a serious threat to the health and safety of an audience at a venue? So what I want you to do is pause the video again and answer this. And then when you come back on, I'll have the answer for you. So the answer for that one is B, excessive noise levels. And really, that's just common sense. If the music's too loud, then you're going to hurt people's ears. And it's obviously not going to be A, late night opening, because that's not going to cause a direct threat to anyone. Poor musicianship is not going to cause serious threat to anyone's health. And again, low ticket sales isn't going to cause a threat to anyone. So when you're in your exam and you're going through the one mark questions at the start of the paper, you're going to need to make sure that you're reading them really carefully because it can be easy when you're quite nervous to miss little bits of information out. So in this question, it wants the name of an organisation an orchestral performer might belong to that provides legal advice. So they want a name of an organization. So the answer to that one would be the Musicians Union. And they are there to give you legal advice as the question states, but they're also there to help you with getting insurance for your instruments, and they can also help you copyright songs and things like that. So for the next example, I want you to read the question carefully again. So it's asking, give one way a musician might select a quality supplier of live sound equipment. So it's not asking you to name a supplier of live sound equipment. It's asking you to give a way a musician might select one. So we've got a few possible answers you could have put for this question. So some of these are maybe asking someone relevant. So maybe a music shop employee or an experienced friend that you might have. You could search on the internet or you could maybe read reviews about a supplier. So if you were going over this question in your exam and you were nervous, it might be easy to read that as name a supplier of life sound equipment. But if you've taken the time to carefully read the question, you will understand it fully. 
So that was the last of Section A's one mark questions we're going to look at. And obviously there's going to be a lot of variation. They're not all going to be exactly the same questions that we've just gone through, but that just gives you an idea of what to think about, okay? So we're going to look at Section A's two mark questions now, and we're going to look at one about job roles. So this question says, the following are extracts from job advertisements in a music magazine. Identify the job roles described in the extracts. So the first extract is... The job will involve attending gigs, writing reviews of performances and writing copy. And then the second extract is, we need someone to join our tour support crew. Duties will include helping set up and take down music equipment. This job involves manual handling. So if you pause the video and answer this. Okay, so the answer they were looking for for job one was a music journalist. You could also put a blogger or a reporter. And then for job two, it would be a roadie. And for our next two mark question, we have a composer can generate royalty payments from having their music played on radio, film or TV. Identify two other ways that royalty payments can be generated for a composer. So if you were listening carefully before, you will know the answers to these. And if you pause your video and answer them now. So these royalties could be generated through live performance at a venue or streaming their music on the internet, okay? So you can't just put internet, you have to say that they'd be streaming the music on the internet and you can't say sell songs, okay? So when answering questions like this, you've got to be quite specific. So other answers you could have got for that question could be making a recording of a song on, say, CD or any other format um, through printed sheet music Um, playing in a public place and recording a cover so an artist could potentially earn royalties through all of those methods there so towards the end of section a you may get a question that is worth two marks but only asks for one reason or one answer okay so what you'll have to do is give your reason and then justify your reason or explain your reason So to demonstrate this point to you, this question asks for us to explain one reason why it might be important to upgrade home studio software regularly. And the answer that I have come up with is to ensure compatibility issues with other software products. And that would give me one mark. And therefore, everything works together rather than causing compatibility issues. And that would give me the other mark. So when you're answering these, it's your point. And then you would say, and therefore, and then you would explain your point. And even if it's blatantly obvious why you've said your reason, you still have to explain it to get that second mark. So it's not a requirement to say, and therefore, but you need a way of connecting the two together. And I think that is probably the easiest one to remember. But if you can find your own way of connecting the two together, then by all means, you can do that. So now we're going to look at section B. And in section B, we're going to look at AJ's studio. So for this example, there is a brief that you'll have to read. And then you answer questions based off this brief. And some of these are quite general questions. And then later on, there's a big question that you'll have to write. So the brief for this question is AJ runs his own small recording studio. He doesn't have enough bookings to work in the studio full time. So he also has a part time job. He handles all the studio bookings himself, as well as working as the studio engineer and carrying out technician responsibilities. Tash has a small studio across town and is in a similar situation to AJ. So the key points to take away from that brief is AJ runs a small recording studio. He doesn't get enough bookings to work full time in the studio, so he also has another part time job and he is responsible for all of the jobs in his studio. And then Tash also is in the same situation as AJ. So the first question we're going to look at is quite a simple one. It says, for one band, AJ has to act as a drum technician. Identify one of his responsibilities. So pause the video and answer this question. So the answers you could have got for that one could be setting up the drums, tuning the drums, changing the drum heads on the drums, adjusting them or fixing them as needed. So the next question we're going to look at is explain one task AJ should complete at the studio in preparation for a recording session with a band. 
And again, as you can see, this is worth two marks. So we'll have to use the same system that we used before. If you can pause the video and answer this one now then. So my answer to this one is have all equipment, so leads, mics and everything like that, that he is likely to use. And therefore he doesn't waste time during the session looking for something. So as you can see, I've stated that he needs to have all the equipment, that's one mark, and therefore he doesn't waste the time during the session looking for something, so that's another mark. And it may seem obvious why he has to have all the equipment out, but you need to state that just to make sure you get the two marks every time. So this next question wants you to explain one positive and one negative factor for a band signing a recording contract with a major record label. And this is four marks, but it only wants two points. So if you could pause the video now and answer this. So if you didn't notice, this is another one of our and therefore questions, because although it's only asking for two points altogether, it wants four marks. So you're going to have to explain each of the points. So what I've got is provides money to develop the band and therefore they can purchase better equipment and puts pressure on the band and therefore it could put a strain on their relationship. So again, one mark for the point, one mark for the explanation of that point. So now we're gonna look at the big question in section B and this is an eight mark question. And the question that we have today is, Tash has suggested joining together with AJ to form one larger studio. Both of them already have some bookings for the next six months. Evaluate whether it would be better for AJ and Tash to combine their businesses or to remain separate. So in your actual exam, this is an example of what a question, an eight mark question would look like. All right, so it does look quite daunting because it's just loads of blank paper, but there is a way to make this a little bit easier for yourself. So the first thing we're gonna do is read the question really carefully because it says in this question, evaluate whether it would be better for AJ and Tash to combine their businesses or to remain separate. So it wants an evaluation of the positives and the negatives of them combining their businesses. So we're gonna make a table like this and we're gonna put positives on one side and negatives on the other. And because it's eight marks, we're gonna need four for each one because we want it to be balanced. We want four positives and four negatives. So what I want you to do now is pause this video, write down your four positives and four negatives. And then when you put the video back on, I'll explain what you're gonna do with those. So hopefully you've now written down all of your positives and negatives. So here's an example of what you could have put. For positives, I have put can combine the bookings of the two studios to reduce downtime. They could combine studio resources, giving the studio a wider range of equipment. Um, so there's only one site, so it's cheaper for costs such as rent, rates, utilities and things like that. And they've also got shared costs for cleaning and consumables. And then my last one is they both gain access to each other's clients, which will open wider opportunities for networking. And then my negatives for this one would be they may have a clash of pre-existing bookings and then alterations might annoy those already booked. They would have to compromise over choice of equipment and marketing direction, things like that. So they also would have less overall control over the output of the studio as the responsibility would be shared between the two of them. And if they both weren't making enough money separately, they may still only make half the money each if they were running this business together. So now we've got all our points broken down. We can't just put these straight into the question as bullet points because we'd only get say half the marks. So what we need to do is make this into full sentences. So we need to back up each of our points. So when you say something is an advantage, you've got to say why it's an advantage. And then you'd go, you could either go through all of your advantages and then all of your negatives or you could go positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on. And then at the end, you're going to need a conclusion that brings together everything you've said. And then in that conclusion, you could give your opinion on whatever the question might be. So in this case, you'd give your opinion on whether or not they should combine their businesses. So now what I want you to do is all that we've just talked about. I want you to put all of your little notes, so the positives and the negatives, into full sentences that you back up. 
and then I want you to write all of that out and put a conclusion at the end with your opinion in. So pause this video now and give yourself about 15 minutes to write this question down. So I would like to see these written out for next time you're in school. So if you could bring those in with you, that'd be great. So this is now the end of this part of the lesson. There is now a Kahoot for you to do. That will have been sent to you in an email. And once you've completed that, that is the end of this lesson. So thank you very much and stay safe.